Mishmash! Hey ya! Uh, today I've got a quick little painting video on my Hansu Mini from yesterday's video. I figured you guys might like to see something a little extra since Fridays are my typical upload day. Fair warning, I painted this mini using some weird paints that are not exactly easy to come by, so calling this a tutorial might be a bit of a stretch. Either way, I'm really doubtful you guys would care too much, I'm just happy to get a double upload in the week anyway, so enjoy. But before we get into the painting, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. It really helps. So, as you can see from the paints list here, some of the colors I ended up using are a little hard to get. Citadel's glaze colors are seemingly impossible to find, I just happen to have all four of them in storage. I might make a video on that later. And P3 colors aren't something that I see too often anymore. Brass Balls is actually the only P3 color I own. I'm sure there's plenty color replacements that you could use, it's just something that I wanted to try out. So to start things out, I'm priming the mini using German Panzer Grey from Vallejo, and I'm spraying over using black. Considering I airbrushed it, I feel no need to actually film it, and the black is simply just an undertone. Once it's dry, we'll then apply a nice coating of dark silver from Proacryl. We'll apply this over the entirety of the model and the axe. I don't know why I'm torturing myself by using a detail brush to apply this, but it's such a satisfying color to paint on that I just kinda had fun with it. I always apologize for using this color so often even though nobody really seems to care, but man, I'm kind of obsessed. This color is just really fun to paint. <laughs> For all the brass portions of the miniature, I'm using P3's Brass Balls. Nah, <laughs> Brass Balls. This color is rather thin in application, and it does take two thin coats to get an opaque finish. But overall, I'm really happy with how it looks. I wouldn't say this paint has a particularly nice flow to it. I found myself having to thin it down quite a bit to actually get a nice finish that wasn't either too chunky or too thin. This might have more to do with the paint not being shaken up as much, and it's kind of old. But regardless, I'm happy with the overall finish. I did have to clean up using a little bit of dark silver, but this was easy peasy as this color has an incredibly strong finish. For his belt, I simply used warm brown. I'm not going to be doing much with this area, as the shades are enough as is, in my opinion. The color is rather bright, and the shades that'll be applied will make it dulled down just enough that it looks fine as is. I'm not being lazy. I'm being efficient. And incredibly lazy. For his pauldron, I'd paint over using bold titanium white. This is of course in preparation for the hazard stripes. Once the paint was dry, I applied three small strands of tape. This was a little haphazardly done, <laughs> haphazardly, as I would apply Vallejo model color black, but the spacing was a little off. It's not the end of the world, as this isn't the main focus of the miniature, but I know I can do better. After the stripes are painted on, I then apply over Imperial Fist. For any stains the yellow may have left, I cleaned up using a little bit of black. This ended up looking fine as I did apply a decal to it, but I definitely want to be more cognizant in the future, as I do kind of want to paint a kill team out of these guys. I then washed the entire miniature using a 1 to 1 mixture of Oblivion Blackwash and Battle Mud. These colors not only dulled down the overall hue of the metallic, but it also dulled down the entirety of the finish. This truly looks like old, heavy industrialized metal. When it finishes drying, of course. 
I'd also apply this over the hazard stripes, though I didn't get this on camera. I ended up fixing them up just a tiny bit off camera, but just remember to just shade this over the entirety of the model. Now for the fun part, we're painting his arm. And for this, I began applying Vallejo Metal Color Silver. This color is bold, absurdly shiny, and it only takes a couple coats to get a strong finish. This was a blast to paint. Once again, I ran into the problem of not really wanting to shade the metallic I used. It looks so incredibly shiny. Though now that I think of it, I technically did leave this unwashed. I ended up using a glaze later on. I could use this paint for hours. I definitely want to find more excuses to use it. I don't know if I'd use this on Necrons, as I do have the Kill Team box and I do have an idea planned out, but that's going to be later on. Just a little something for you to look forward to in the future. Once we're done having our fun, we'd go back to highlighting the miniature. And for this, I'm highlighting the brass using Bright Brass from Vallejo Model Color. I've had this color in storage for a long time, it's kind of been sitting in the back of one of my drawers. But I'm really happy to have a good use for it. It works quite well with brass balls in my opinion. Again, haha, brass balls. I would also use just a little bit of brass balls to clean up any of the areas that have a little too much shade applied. Technically this is an air color, so keep that in mind. To paint the midsection of his torso, I'd use Black Templar, simple as. With the metallic undercoat, this looks pretty damn good. We don't really have to do much work here. Again, I'm not being lazy, I'm being efficient. And being a little lazy. After doing that, I'd use my trusty tester's dry brush and go over the entirety of the armor using Vallejo Game Color Metallic Silver. I'd also do the same on the axe. This makes the armor really stand out, and I'm already super happy with it. Of course we'll do more details later, but you could call it good here. Also for any metallic flakes the dry brush leaves, I can easily sweep away using a little bit of water on a detail brush. I'll also make sure to use metallic silver on the chains as a direct highlight. Highlighting this directly on the chain using a detail brush makes it stand out much more. I didn't exactly do a lot for the wraps on the axe besides painting it with dark grey and shading it using the same shade I used previously. I kinda wish I did more, but eh, whatever. Now going back to the fun part, I'm using Gilliman Glaze over the entirety of the arm, and I'm mostly focusing it into the recesses. I felt using a glaze was something that would be better than using a shade, as I felt this would keep the initial shine intact. And I just wanted to have an excuse to use this color, I don't want it to collect dust forever. I know it's rare, but I'd rather use it on something than not use it at all. To finish up the armor, into all the recesses I'd wash some Doom Bull Brown mixed 1 to 1 with Magma Droth Flame, and this is slightly watered down. This makes for a perfect rusted color, and it really helps with how dull the armor is. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Watering it down really helped with applying it in different areas, as some areas I wanted to be more rusted than others. I really would apply this all over the miniature too. I wanted this color to be much stronger in the recesses, but I'd use it very thin down on the broader sections.
to weather down the brass, I ended up using a little bit of Nihiloc Oxide. I was super sparing with this as you can see, I really didn't use this on any of the broader areas. I really only want this to settle into the recesses, and I didn't use that much as is. This was also watered down as I didn't want this color to stand out too much. Only in very, very specific areas. I wasn't super satisfied with the axe, so I ended up painting the entirety of it using a little bit of Black Legion. After it dried, I used the same dry brush from previously using Vallejo Metallic Silver. I'd also use a detail brush to sketch in some really fine highlights. These scratchy highlights really finish everything off as I not only would use it on the axe, but the armor itself. It looks quite natural if you do it in a scraping motion, and it's super satisfying to pull off. It's really fun to paint metallics like this. To finish off his arm, I then highlight over the broader sections using the same metal color silver. I didn't have to do much as the glaze really settled nicely into the recesses as is, but this little extra bit of color would really make this arm stand out and shine. After doing so, I'd call this guy done, and overall I'm really pleased with how he turned out. I know there's a lot more that I could have done, but hey, what can you do? There's a ton of miniatures to be painted, and overall I think he looks amazing. Amazing enough that I really do think a kill team would be awesome. I wonder if I could run this guy. Regardless, I know this miniature is something that I wanted to do primarily for the kit bashing, but I found painting this miniature to be profoundly gratifying, satisfying, and fun. And I can only ever hope that it was the same for you. And on top of that, I hope it was helpful. If it was, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more, and maybe check out the first video. I also just want to take this time to say a gigantic thank you to Arthur. He was not only super receptive to the idea of this kitbashing series, but he also promoted me heavily in his video, and I think there's a lot of new people here from his channel that I'd like to say hi to. Hello. Arthur's been a huge help to my channel ever since I started. We began talking around the time that I only had 35 subscribers, and ever since then he's been here to help. If you haven't seen it, he and I actually did a video together. But hey, I think I've flat my beak enough as is. Check out his channel if you're a fan of mine and you haven't seen him yet. And remember to mishmash, kitbash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya!